I've done videos like this in the past, but the numbers change, the specs change, and I feel like it's worth doing an update video now that I find myself asking the same questions as now I am in the market for a Tesla of some kind, and I'm kind of split between these two vehicles, so if my mind is dwelling on this subject, might as well share with you guys my thought process. So if you're also in the market, keep in mind that the Model 3 and Model Y do actually have quite a few differences despite aesthetically looking insanely similar. In fact, from the outside a lot of people still can't tell the difference unless both vehicles are put next to each other and on the interior you have even more similarities aligned but there's a fair share of upgrades that you should be aware of if you're spending this kind of money on a car so I primarily want to focus on what you're getting when you opt for the more expensive Model Y aside from of course the obvious larger cargo space and more storage options the Model Y is bigger it sits higher off the ground so if you don't like having to kind of fall down into a vehicle vehicle's seats. The Model Y is much better at you just kind of sidestepping where you need to go. It's a crossover, not technically an SUV, so it's not really taller than I am, and I'm about 5'11", but it definitely doesn't feel as huge or as big as it looks on the outside once you're inside it. It drives very much like a sedan. Both vehicles, of course, have an insane amount of performance and support the Tesla supercharging network. Both of them have autopilot, and now in 2022, both of these vehicles are powered by latest generation AMD Ryzen chips and even have embedded GPUs from AMD that are the same type of graphics power you will find in a PlayStation 5. A lot of that will be unlocked in software updates later. As of right now, those GPUs aren't doing much, but both vehicles have heated steering wheels, wireless charging built in with USB-C ports in the back. But the biggest difference we should be aware of when comparing these two vehicles is the starting price. The Model 3 has three separate trims to choose from with a performance, long range, and rear-wheel drive option, and that rear-wheel drive doesn't get enough credit in my view, because we often look at these different range numbers, and we know that the Model Y, for $59,000, starts with 330 miles of range, which is pretty good. Then we look over at the Model 3, rear-wheel drive, starting at $45,000, and that gets 272 miles of range. Less than 60 miles of difference between the two, but the battery chemistries is where the real differences start to shine, because the Model 3 rear-wheel drive currently is the only only Tesla in the United States, which is rocking a lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which essentially means instead of using the standard cylindrical cells like you have in the Model Y and Model 3, these are prismatic, which means they look like rectangular boxes, and they're less energy dense, which is why the range is lower, but the greatest advantage of lithium iron phosphate is you can charge them to 100% every single day. With the Model 3 and Model Y long range and performance variants, because they're using 2170 cells and they're not lithium iron phosphate, Phosphate. These batteries are only meant to be charged to 100% when you're going on road trips. It's not really supposed to go up that high for daily driving, which means if you're charging from home or even just supercharging before you go back to your apartment, you really shouldn't be going much higher than 80 or 90%. The reason I want to bring that up is because there's $14,000 between these two trims, and while it sounds like the Model Y is getting substantially longer range with 330 versus 272, that 272 mile range is something that you'll likely be able to start off with assuming you're charging from home. You're going to leave the house with 270 miles of range every single day. Over time, of course, that battery will degrade as all batteries do. But the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is known for degrading a lot slower than the 2170 battery chemistry that they're using in the rest of Tesla's vehicles. So if you're only charging to 80 or 90 percent every day with the Model Y long range, you're actually going to be leaving the house around 280 or 290 most of the time. So not really that big a difference in range for daily driving and even on road trips. Because the Model 3 rear-wheel drive is a smaller vehicle, it's more efficient, and the battery doesn't have as many kilowatt hours in it, it means that on a lot of road trips, you're not actually going to be saving that much time because it really falls down to supercharging speed. I think the most deceptive thing about range that people take for granted these days is, oh, if the vehicle has a longer range, that means I start with 100%, I drive until it's near empty, and then I plug in again and the vehicle charges all the way up to 100 percent and then I keep going. Well that's how we are with combustion engine vehicles because that's the most efficient way to travel with gasoline cars but with an EV and supercharging being baked into the Tesla software it accounts for how long it's going to charge and how long it is till your next stop and because of that you're pretty much never charging up to 90 or 100 percent at superchargers. You're just charging enough until you can get to your next destination which is why you'll find in a lot of road trip videos between a standard range Tesla like 
the Model 3 rear-wheel drive in a long-range Model Y, the amount of time it takes to get to your destination might be the difference of 15, 20 minutes. It's not going to be like you're there hours ahead of someone else who has 60 miles less range than you. That does bring me to one of the advantages the Model 3 has, though, if you're not comfortable with having sub-300 miles of range, and that is their all-wheel drive option. Of course, the long-range Model 3 has the longest range of any Tesla aside from the Model S, which is $95,000. And if you're watching this type of video, then the Model S is probably not on your radar. 358 miles for $51,000, estimated by the EPA, which is just value you do not see in the EV space. There's other competitors catching up close to 300 miles here and there, but to be under the $55,000 price point and still surpassing 350 miles of range is incredible. It says a lot about how insanely efficient the Model 3 all-wheel drive is, not to mention still being insanely fast, with a 0-60 to 60 time of around 4.5 seconds. A little bit faster than the 4.8 seconds that the all-wheel drive Model Y is offering, but still, the Model 3 long range is $8,000 cheaper and goes further on a charge. So that certainly makes it a really, really good value. So some of you are probably wondering at this point, if you've got the lithium iron phosphate option with the Model 3 and you've got the super long range option, why bother with the Model Y? Well, a couple things that might end up making a difference to you is the Model Y is actually a hatchback design, which means the entire back half opens up. Of course, it's an automated lift gate, just like the Model 3 is, but the Model 3 is more of just a standard trunk. It's not a hatchback design. And yes, you can fold down the second row of seats and kind of do some basic car camping with it or fit some fairly large objects in the back, but for the most part, it's a much smaller opening than the Model Y has. And the Model Y is also rocking another secret feature that doesn't get enough attention, the HEPA filter. Basically, a hospital-grade air filtration system with bioweapon defense mode, as Tesla calls it, because it literally can filter out external toxins from the air. Tesla recently uploaded a video about this on their channel and showcased how these really, really powerful filters will prevent smoke or toxins or even a chemical attack if it was going on outside your vehicle wouldn't make it to the interior because of how advanced this filtration system is for your air quality, which is kind of cool. The Model 3, unfortunately, doesn't have that. It still has a very good air filtration system, but the HEPA filter takes up a lot more space and the Model Y is larger so they could fit it inside of there, but the Model 3, unfortunately, is too small and it's the only vehicle Tesla makes that does not have the hatch design or the HEPA filter. The Model Y is also sporting a seven-seater option, which is actually pretty rare in crossovers of this size. You're not going to see that with the Mach-E, the ID4, the Ionic 5. As someone who sat in the third row of the Model Y myself, it's definitely not good for people over five foot eight. But if you have kids, which most of the time, if you're filling a car with seven people, there are going to be some of you that are smaller than others. The Model Y offers that. It's a three thousand dollar add-on, but considering that's the most number of people any Tesla can hold, it's kind of impressive that just for a little over $60,000, you can get a Tesla that fits seven people. If you want to get something better than a Model Y that fits seven, you're easily going to be spending over $100,000, and so far, the Model X deliveries have not been prioritizing anyone that wants the seven-seater. So, in the meantime, in recent history at least, it feels like if you want a seven-seater Tesla, you pretty much have to go with the Model Y. They even stuffed two USB-C charge ports back there, which I was kind of impressed with. However, no heated seats in that third row. However, for the Model 3 and Y, all five of the main seats in the first and second rows are heated, which is nice. But the second row passengers in the Model Y are probably going to have a much better view, especially when driving through scenic areas or in cities, because the Model Y has a panoramic glass roof, which is kind of an unobstructed view of directly what's over the vehicle. Model 3 still has a glass roof, which is actually quite a bit safer than a traditional metal roof, despite what you may think. But it's got a crossbeam going right down the middle, which makes it a little bit more obtrusive if you're trying to look at what's above you. So the second row definitely isn't as spacious as the Model Y is. This comes from personal experience. Your knees have to be quite a bit higher in the Model 3 because it is a sedan. Your head is more likely to bonk in that side column, whereas the Model Y gives you plenty of breathing room and it's very comfortable to sit in. And it's also worth mentioning that at checkout, you can get a tow hitch with the Model Y for only $1,000 extra, whereas the Model 3, at least through the Tesla website in the United States, it does not offer a tow hitch. There are third-party options, but you kind of have to trust a lot of strangers or your own DIY capabilities because you got to take apart quite a bit of the car to install a tow hitch, and it's probably not going to tow as well as the Model Y does. But if you want heavy-duty bike racks or to attach a trailer to your Tesla of some kind, the Model Y is probably going to come out ahead there. The Model 3 comes with 18-inch aero wheels by default, and if you're willing to take a little bit of a hit in range, you can opt 
stocked for 19 inch sport wheels, but they will cost you $1,500 more. And it's somewhat of a similar story with the Model Y. The 19 inch Gemini wheels are standard, but if you're willing to take a hit in range, you can opt for the 20 inch inductive wheels for $2,000 extra. So they're kind of pricey, but they do look pretty awesome. And both the performance versions of Model 3 and Y come with 21 inch wheels, which look insanely cool, but they're gonna result in a bit more of a bumpy ride. And of course the performance Teslas have a spoiler on the back, but far lower range because those wheels are not very aerodynamic or efficient, but you are getting improved brake calipers with those options. Even if they cost you 56,000 on the Model 3 or 64,000 on the Model Y, they're pricey vehicles, but it's gonna be really, really hard to find four-door sedans or crossovers that accelerate as quickly as those do. The Model 3 performance does a zero to 60 in just over three seconds, and the Model Y performance not far behind at 3.5. So obviously Tesla does not make slow vehicles, and neither of these vehicles are very impractical, I might add. Both have frunks that you don't find on traditional combustion engine vehicles. Both can sit up to five for free, and up to seven if you're willing to spend a little bit extra with the Model Y, and both are industry leading when it comes to electric vehicle efficiency. They have octo valve heat pumps, which means that they retain a lot of their range even in cold weather, not to mention have access to the incredibly expansive Tesla supercharging network, which no other charge network comes close to right now. So essentially, if you're split on these two, and if none of the things I've brought up in today's video have swayed you a particular direction, there's really no wrong answer. It just depends on what is important to you in your life, because I'd say money is probably the most important factor for most of you. I would heavily consider to start with the Model 3 rear wheel drive. I know it's so tempting when you see that $51,000 price point for the long range Model 3, because it goes 358 miles on a charge and that's so cool, but keep in mind, you're only gonna be charging it to around 80% for daily charging, which brings you a lot closer to the Model 3 rear wheel drive range, which you can charge to 100% every day. And because there's so much tremendous savings, if you're willing to go with that entry level model, I would encourage you to question, do you really, really need that long range? Especially if you download a better route planner, plug in the Tesla you're thinking of buying and plug in two separate destinations and change the vehicle model. See what the estimated time changes because the way batteries are handled where they only really charge up really quickly between zero and 50% and then slow down a lot after that, you'd be surprised that even with shorter range Teslas, they get to their destination only about 20 or 30 minutes later than their long range options. So if you're not as into the zero to 60 time being under five seconds or you don't care too much about your sedan having all wheel drive, the Model 3 with the lithium iron phosphate pack for $45,000 is a pretty tremendous value, even if it was a lot cheaper a few years ago. If there's limitations you can think of with that Model 3 for your lifestyle, then yes, that extra $14,000 may be worth it. But if you absolutely care about autopilot and full self-driving and how much the car can do autonomously, here's a little food for thought. That base Model 3 that you can charge to 100% every day, you could add the $12,000 full self-driving package to it and you would still be paying less than the base price of the Model Y without full self-driving. That's how big this price gap is between both models. So if the longer range or the all-wheel drive is not that important to you, that Model 3, especially for me as someone who's in the market for a Tesla right now, it has become very, very tempting considering how much money can be overall saved, which of course accelerates most of your timelines. But I think all of the flexibility and the options the Model Y allows for is what makes it so tempting. Yes, it's a lot more expensive, but you can get a seven seater, which the Model 3 definitely isn't gonna have. You can get the tow hitch straight from Tesla. You get the HEPA filtration system. You get the panoramic glass roof. You get the hatchback design, which is gonna be far better for car camping, which might long-term save you a lot of money on hotels if you're willing to just sleep within the car because both vehicles have camp mode, which keeps the air cycling in and out overnight without eating into too much range. So it's an incredibly tough call and it's gonna depend a lot on your use case, which one makes most sense. But because I'm really split on this subject, I would love to hear what you think makes most sense for me or what makes most sense for you. All that good stuff, let me know what you're thinking down below. Thank you to everyone supporting the channel over on Patreon, helping me buy one of these vehicles later this year. And everyone just watching, that seriously helps out a ton too. Take care, have a great day.